good morning. This is Aaron Gonzalez, SharePoint MVP. Today I want to show what an ASP.NET developer does when they start using Office 365 SharePoint Online. Currently, I had this experience with some developers, and I want to show the creative ways they have been using ASP.NET inside of SharePoint uh, to accomplish specific scenarios. SharePoint, it's an ASP.NET application, right? So there are, there are web controls, there are specific ASP.NET components. It's ASP.NET 3.5, 2007 is ASP.NET 2.0. So every ASP.NET developer can actually use their skills and knowledge to leverage SharePoint and build whatever they need. Because in reality, SharePoint is an ASP.NET application. That may be changing right now, but the core currently is ASP.NET. So let me show you what I did. First of all, they use SharePoint Designer as an ASP.NET tool. Check this out. So I will open SharePoint Designer here in my computer. Here is SharePoint Designer. Let's open a site. And check this out. So if I click File inside of my site, select More Pages, More Pages, we have Master Page, JavaScript, CSS. Well, I can use ASPX, and this is a ASP.NET web form. So if I create the file, this is going to call employees, let's say. Um, it's going to load an ASP.NET page inside of, inside of SharePoint. If I click Save, it will save the page inside of the site pages inside of our SharePoint site. And if I click the option of preview in browser, it should load an ASPX page. Here it is. ASP.NET web form page hosted inside of SharePoint Online. Now, how can I get the branding? How can I get the user interface that we have in SharePoint? Well, in the style section, we have the attach option so we can attach to the existing default master page. That way, our ASPX page will inherit all the master page components that we have in SharePoint, including uh, the Chrome layouts and all this stuff that we have. So let's say, let's click Seattle master. You will see that what will happen in our code is that the page directives are going to change because our page directive, now it's going to point to the master page that we have in SharePoint. And also, it will have the multiple register tags for the SharePoint web controls and other DLLs. And notice what happened. It just leave my page directive here with master page pointing to our default master page in SharePoint. It referenced our Microsoft SharePoint web Parts pages DLL version 16. And it also added the SharePoint um, it registered the SharePoint tag prefix for pointing to all the SharePoint web controls. So this is just ASP.NET, but instead of using the system.web uh, DLL, we are using the SharePoint.web controls DLL. So what an ASP.NET developer will do is we'll create a content placeholder for our page because now it inherits from a master page. So that's exactly what we are going to do right now. We just type ASP content placeholder content and then content placeholder ID we have the placeholder main ID here that we will use that SharePoint recognizes because it's inside of the master page and run at server if we save the page and then navigate back to the page we will see that our ASPX form page now has a SharePoint layout. That's good. It's still an ASPX page. Awesome. So SharePoint Designer. So here we have SharePoint Designer. Notice that when we save the page, only when we save the page, inside of the insert tab, we have the concept of inserting ASP.NET controls. So if I say insert a button or a text view or a label, that's completely possible. So let's say that I am inserting label here. And I will type here like employee ID, employee ID, it's just a label, 
Then I will use a break line here and then a text box, an ASP and next text box. So it's a text box here and employee number. Save it. Browse again. It's just a form. Employee ID with a text box. And then you can say, well, if I, I will select the actual text box web control and notice here the tag properties option, we can do this. This is actually the same properties that we have in ASP.NET. So client ID, mode, teaming, CSS class, so we can provide some CSS. Um, we can use CSS that are from SharePoint here. So we will need to figure it out what are the ones that we want to use. But we can reference those. Or we can actually upload our CSS file and then apply our CSS classes. We can also create our content placeholder that will uh, that, that will allow us to enhance the head section of the page and add our own styles. That's totally completely possible. Well, in SharePoint, we have the concept of a data view web part, which is like a grid. Uh, it supports ordering. It supports a lot of stuff. It already knows what are the multiple lists and document libraries that we have available here in our SharePoint site. So if I select employees, it will drop the whole thing. It will show our employee list. So let's do that. Let's click employees and it will bring here a bunch of XML stuff with SSLT. And when I save the file, you will see that we will have a grid. So let's save the file and then preview in browser. And what do we have? We have a SharePoint page that is rendering information. Okay. When we click the actual XML code, some options are going to be visible in the ribbon inside of SharePoint Designer. So we have here the design section, the web part section, the table, and the options section. So let me show you something, a, a trick here that is very interesting. First of all, I can pick and choose different type of tables or the way that I want to render my content. Let me select this basic table. What this will do, it will remove the checkbox that you just saw when we uh, get the data. Let me show you. So here it is. This is my grid. Okay. Perfect. Um, here we go. And we can do additional stuff, like if I go back to design the options, notice that we can select the paging, so we can enable paging every 30 items. Or we can pick and choose from our data source how many fields that we want to display in our, in our grid. So we can add more items. These are the fields that are defined in our list. So we can select, pick and choose, right? As an ASP.NET developer and a web developer, you can remember the parameters. So there, we have this parameter option that we can create, new parameter, let's say employee number, and then head, control, cookie, form, query string, or server variable. That sounds familiar to an ASP.NET developer. So if we select control, we can reference our employee number text box that we have here. So if I just select here, I will look for employee number. So I just created a parameter between my SharePoint web part, XSLT list view web part into a text box inside of my form page. I click OK. Uh, of course, I need, a, I need to uh, configure the actual filter because I created the parameter now, here we have the filter option inside of our SSLT list view web part, and we can apply a field from our web from our list, in this case employee number, equal to a parameter, in this case employee number here. So now we created kind of a filter option between a SharePoint component and an ASP.NET component. Let me save. And of course, this will not work because there's no post back in my, in my page. So I need to add maybe another button here to trigger a post back. So I will insert ASP.NET control button, and then I can click here, search. Save the page. 
and then render again and see what happened. Okay, so I need to remember a. So I will type 24646, search, and boom, we have our information coming here. It did a, it did a, a, a refresh and then retrieve the data. So it's ASP.NET with SharePoint. <laughs> let's let's take it further. ASP.NET application in 3.5, we have the AJAX component included in the actual .NET framework. Okay. So guess what? You can do this. You can do an, an update panel. Update panel server. And then ID. Let's call update panel one. And then update mode conditional. <laughs> what is very nice about um, SharePoint designer designer is that it already has intelligence. So here is our update panel. And we will figure it out that our trigger to our update panel, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a button, a postback trigger, which our control ID is our button number one, right? And the event name that we want here is the click event for this particular trigger. Then, whatever we have inside a content template, it's what is gonna get uh, the Ajax support. So we have the content template here. So what I will do now is just to copy my SSLT code inside of the content template and put it here inside of content template, save the page. And let's see the behavior. What you can expect here is that when we click uh, search an employee, um, it will not do the page of the postback because this is the Ajax, right? So let's see. If I type an employee like two, four, six to seven, click search, no postback, you have the data. If I do uh, T two, four, six to four, click search, no postback, and then we have the data there, right? Not <laughs> no code at all. Just ASP.NET out of the box. And of course, I will say that we also have other controls. In this case, let's use a update progress control inside of our page. So again, ASP, ASP um, it's called update progress control. Update progress control with the ID, whatever I want. Progress one, run a server. And then I will use the actual template that I want to show when the progress is happening. So I can use progress template and then just type processing for now, right? If I can use another icon or something, let me put it on top of the actual uh, update panel here. Save the page. And let me show you what will happen. So now let me search again, 24649, click search, processing, and then let's see, where's my data? This is so bizarre. 24646, click search, processing, and then refreshing our data. So, yep, ASP.NET meets SharePoint.